Hello everyone, it's Heidi from flutterbyheidi.co.uk. I'm Heidi Smith, I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator based in the United Kingdom. And today we're talking Christmas gift packaging and I'm uh, adapting a project, uh, project that I saw made by Doris Pinchler in Austria, um, which was... Um, which was one that I, I, I saw her make, but this one is um, specifically designed um, to fit a, quite a, a larger sort of gift than the one that she did. You can see it's quite a nice height, and I'll show you why I went for this size. Um, you can see I've used the lovely snowflake wishes here, beautiful snowflake designs I've used several times, you can see on the side here, a bit of misty moonlight and balmy blue. And I've used some of the lovely um, flowers for every season uh, ribbon combo for the um, for, for the finish, which is misty moonlight with whisper white and some silver. And this particular size box fits one of these hexagonal jam jars. Now I've got lots of these that I do use for um, for making jams okay occasionally not always um, but they're great for gifting this one just happens to have a couple of bath bombs in I'm actually I'm um, going to fill it with those lovely little bath pills the, the smaller ba bath fizzers so that they um, they all fit in there um, and are beautiful I just ha happen to not have any to hand so that's the size that fits in it and um, so you if you get the idea that the overall kind of height of this is about 10 centimeters by around about you know seven and a half ish in in uh, across the widest point so about three inches across um by about three and three quarter inches high is the size of the jump of the jar that i'm using um and I just love this top. It's one that's been around a long time in origami folds and we've kind of hijacked it a little bit to use with our trimmers. But I just think it's a, it gives such a pretty finish for any gift box, particularly at Christmas. And then I've used the tailored tag punch just to punch a couple of punches, which I've repeat stamped, using some of those lovely faceted gems on there to create our little gift tag um, as well. So... Um, that's all you're going to need. You're going to need a ruler and you're going to need some wisp white cardstock and some uh, something to score with. Um, you're also going to want um, obviously some uh, some glue and some coloured uh, and some inks to um, complete your project project as well. So having done it in Misty Moonlight and Balmy Blue, I'm actually going to use my one of my favourite combinations which is the uh, Highland Heather and Pool Party because I want to show you how you can adapt this ribbon so that it will still go with that. I mean it wouldn't be too bad with the Misty Moonlight but it's not quite right but I'll show you what I do with that. Um, and you're going to want your Stampin' Pierce mat because it's a photopolymer stamp set. So to start off with for our um, uh, uh, actual container we're going to want a piece of cardstock that is 25 by 21 centimeters I've actually already started scoring this because I got interrupted by the postman and other things so um, there we go so on the 25 um, centimeter length you are going to score every four centimeters so at four at eight at 12 at 16 which is right on that join at 20 and at 24 leaving a centimeter at the end there and then on the long edge um, at 21 centimeters you're going to score at four centimeters and then again at 13 centimeter uh, no no you're not going to score at 13 you're going to score at 14 and a half centimeters okay so that's that one there and you'll end up with this piece so you have a long piece that's going to be your bottom that's your middle section and then this part is the top that we're going to create the pretty pattern on. Now normally I would tell you to stamp at this point but actually we're not going to because I I'm done the, the stamping so that it just fits perfectly down that section there as you can see so you get this lovely sort of effect um, as you go through. So once you've done your main scoring you're going to come in with your ruler and just score diagonally across each of these top square section so I'm going in one direction and all the way across I like to sort of come to where it joins and score um, and then do the same going in the opposite direction so it's probably been another one of those videos that never was you know I'll get another interruption so it'll be like third third time's the charm <laughs> 
at least with this one because I hadn't actually finished done any stamping it wasn't so bad to kind of stop okay so what you've then got is a section at the top that's kind of got a, a crisscross and a long panel and these bottom ones then you just want to come in with your trimmer again and just score those verticals so you're going to score from the top of the card down to where those two diagonal lines um, meet so because you're coming in on the other side this is going to be at three centimeters at seven and then you can do this with your ruler if you prefer and you're just scoring down just a couple of centimetres at 11 at 15 at 19 and at 23 so again hopefully Hopefully you can sort of see those, perhaps not. I'll, I'll perhaps put a diagram on my blog, it might make it easier for you to, to see that. Um, okay. However, believe me, those score lines are there. So when you score, you can score horizontally and then score, burnish rather, those diagonals. And that is much easier to do while it is all still flat. So again, um, just gently press them because you don't want to extend the crease further down so you see I'm kind of folded almost in half there and I find that um, is the best way to do those so if we reinforce those vertical creases first that bone folder and then as I say just come in and in effect you're kind of making a little bit of a triangle um, again some you might find it easier to go in one direction first and then the other direction um, it depends how well you've kind of scored as well um, but as long as you kind of pinch from that horizontal score line you should find it will work just so just take your time on those So you can see I'm using this one so it doesn't extend down here. Um, find another one I haven't yet done. There we go. And as you do more, obviously the card becomes more pliable. Um, and you can just um, they finger crease those is fine. So once you've done all of those, which I think I have, okay. We've done all of those little vertical ones. You'll see those naturally will score. So I, I fold them going out because that's where the score line is. And again, do those, those come in last really once you've done those other points. Oh, that's, there's one I haven't quite done. There we go. So you end up with all of those creases. Now you're not trimming anything off the top here. We are going to trim on the bottom here but with all of these apart from this one end skinny piece I'm just cutting straight up because you want to use those straight lines to help line up your overlapping at the bottom of the box and so you're just coming up last one just straight up there again so now you've got this piece here bring in your stamping pierce mat and decide which color you're going to use for your stamping I'm going to use the Highland Heather for my small stamp and I'm just going to come in and this one just fits perfectly in that top little sort of triangular section and I'm just going to come and repeat stamp with my thumb in the ink of course 
hopefully that'll be covered up by some other so there we go we've got our first bit move our highland heather out of the way and then coming in with my snowflakes and i'm kind of putting it um, with you can see there's a large snowflake the slightly smaller of the two that then fits at an angle into that sort of gap I say each of these just happens to be a perfect fit for for this and I'm going to come in with my Highland Heather again and I'm going to kind of nestle that in the opposite direction so I'm kind of coming in sideways instead of underneath And you can create whatever pattern you you like but the I just like the way these snowflakes kind of nestle each other swap over again and this time I'm turning it the other way up so again you sort of look like you've got a slightly different pattern I say you could do it more random than I, than I have done if you wanted to and you could add extra snowflakes in if you found you got a spot um, that wasn't uh, covered. Pop that one away and just come in with my last bit of Highland Heather and again I'm just going to sort of and just nestle those around the bottom edge I say it just happens to fit pretty perfectly with that. So now we've got our stamping done, we can go on to finish our box. So the um, bit we need to do, um, I like to do before I construct the box, just because it makes it a little easier um, to do, is I just come in and hole punch on each of these little points. So where You've got that vertical line just fold it together and come along now um, this is an old stamping up hole punch um, you know use whatever you happen to have i like this one because it's quite nice and small um, which for a narrower thread but again if you're using a thicker ribbon you you might want to have a, a bigger punch i'm just kind of coming in about half a centimeter quarter of an inch um, on each of those um, and the reason for that is just that when you pull it up it, you're not right on the very edge so you're going to end up with something that looks like this next is to construct so I'm going to use my Stampin' Seal Plus um, for this and I'm going to run that all the way down this edge here now remember with Stampin' Seal Plus it's a little um, it's little bits of tape so you don't have to use the flick that we used to use and I like to fold over one edge and then just line that up on that far edge and you'll see it's starting to come together the next bit I do like to use a bit of um, a stamping seal um, or a bit of wet glue um, you want something that's going to give a really good um, sort of size uh, size shape to it now if you're using a jar like I am this is actually quite a good time to pop it in because what that will then do is give you the perfect um, shape to um, to match up with and then all you're going to do is just add some glue and if you line those sides up straight together do the first one and do the second one and then just have a look at where your back seam is because you're going to want this my back seam is here so I want this one to come over from the front and this one probably should have been from the front as well but and that's it so I'm just going to turn that up and obviously because I've got my jar perfect so that's going to keep it um, enhanced and then I talked about the ribbon so I am using a it's actually a, a knitter's needle that you use for sewing up um, and I've got my thread threaded but what I'm actually going to do is take this misty moonlight bit 
and I'm just going to pull that through. So what I'm going to end up with is a lovely sparkly whisper white and silver um, ribbon. And all I'm going to do is start at the front. So, so start where you need to go, and that, that makes it so much easier. See, you know what it's like? You pick up these things, you think, why on earth didn't I think of that before? Oh, don't pull it all the way through, obviously. And you're just going to thread that through each of those points. Keep hold of that end. Like so. I'm going to leave that on for a moment while I quickly do my tag actually because I've forgotten to do that. So if I just grab a scrap of Whisper White cardstock um, and my tailored tag punch and I just want to use my little on there. Yeah that should do. And on this one actually all I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp all over and then I'm going to um, punch out my two tags because my front one is um, obviously not my I'm not going to be writing on it so so just keeping my ink pad separate and you see here this is again so how these nest really well grab your tag if you wanted to you could score and fold and try punching I just don't like punching um, through too many layers I find that quite hard and it's not good for your punch to to strain it so I'm just going to punch twice and then back to back those so you'll see my, my in effect it's double sided and then I'm going to come through and just punch at the end there so that I can then now feed through. Obviously you'd write on it first if you wanted to. And all that remains is for us to pull that together and you will see how well that just ties in. tie it into a little bow there we have our little tag on the top and there you have a pair of pretty what I think are snowflake topped boxes perfect for Christmas gifting and your base is nice and neat and all sealed up um, and nice and strong so all those layers and just add as much glue as you need to Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that. hope it's tempted you to use your snowflake wishes even more or purchase it. If you'd like to purchase it, pop along to my blog at flutterbyheidi.co.uk. The links are there. Or if you go to the description, press a little down arrow below this video and you'll find links to all the products there as well. Thank you for watching. Come back again soon. Bye.